Farm after the Conservation Commission's May 16, 2018 approval. And we have uh, Jessica Rittenauer, the um, Executive Director of the 300 Committee here to bring us through this. Thank you. Uh, I will be extremely brief uh, because I, I've made a presentation on this. Um, and um, I have a copy of a memo that town council had sent to the town board of selectmen and we forwarded it to Jen as well to explain that after the conservation restriction was approved by the conservation commission and the board of selectmen, it went back to the state for <coughs> signature and their legal department identified a few different areas that we would consider minor changes but the, the fact of the matter is that any change at all, uh, town council <coughs> recommended come back to this board for ratification. Uh, so what Pat did in her explanation is she just bulleted the six items. Uh, so the, the changes are defining special events authorized at the farm, substituting references where we refer to a baseline documentation report, they're referring to a land management plan, which actually encompasses the baseline, requires fuel storage tanks to be above ground, corrects one cross-reference um, to a paragraph that just had been incorrectly referenced, um, edited a mathematical inconsistency, and deleted a duplicate statement. So these are minor changes, but just wanted to ensure that everything was brought to your attention. With a ratification vote of the Conservation Commission, and then later, a vote of the selectmen, um, the plan is for town council's office to be back in touch with the state to confirm that all changes have been approved. Thank you, Jessica. Um, Jen did also forward the document itself with, with the changes in it, so. Um, I'll make a motion. Thank you. To accept. This is a time sensitive thing just to let people know. Second. All right. Um, any questions or comments from the board? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, unanimous, so moved. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. All right, now we move Thank on to, um, there's a request for a continuance to amend the existing order of conditions. Wig Wigwam Sipawissa Trust, 8 Wigwam Road, West Falmouth, Massachusetts. And this has been read into the record um, several times, so I won't do so again. Um, what is the yes, thing? Madam Chairman? The applicant is requesting a continuance until August eighth to allow for additional time to um, uh, make the mo site modifications and um, prepare the materials that the commission wanted. Oh, Betsy, you have a question. Well, that was I was going to ask. Why? Eight, Why? Eight. Okay. It seemed like a pretty straightforward thing that they were requested to do. My wife's birthday. I guess it was put on the back burner. So I'll make a move to mm -hmm. continue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you should make a Second. note. This is the final continuance. Um, I'm sorry, <coughs> that was you, Peter? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, but the. Just to let you know, it was 110, 214, 328, 516. And what's this next one? Mm -hmm. August 8th. Eight. 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 Um, um, Courtney, I, I'm not sure I heard you. Were you, say, were you make saying that that should be part of the motion? Well, I'm just, I mean, I think we've given them multiple continuances. That's if true. they can get their, they should be able to get their act together and come in and present their project. And if they can't deal with it, then withdraw it. Okay, so let me restate my question. Are you suggesting that the statement that yeah, this is I the think last we should include should in the motion? Of, I mean, and, um, this is, we're not of a mind to grant any further continuances after this one. All right, so. Um, Just to let the board know, some of the issues out there are violations of other orders of conditions. Basically, what we did ask the applicant to do is go back to, I think there were, I can't also talk about something. Health, multiple, multiple amendments to this project. It's going to take time to, to go through them. There were some violations out there when we went out there to to look at the project the first time. Those have to be addressed. I understand your concern, Courtney. Well, but, but I, I guess my also, attitude is. I would leave that out, Courtney. Let's just get this. Yeah, I mean, I, I it would needs say to be addressed, Courtney. why don't they continue it? 
for six months to get their issues resolved and then come in. We'd like to have them plant this year. Yeah. There's a lot of plants. This is three months. Um, I can, I can assure you the applicant's representative is in the audience and he is taking every, he is listening to everything you said. I'm not happy, but whatever. Okay. All um, right. I've made my point. Could I, Kevin. Um, perhaps we could inform them that it would be uh, helpful for the members of the commission if there were some sort of a uh, listing of all of the issues that that's what's happening Kevin because we have to go through uh, multiple uh, I understand multiple but I don't you know we've already had a, a recent presentation and uh, you know the diagram showed things that were there but weren't supposed to be there mm -hmm. and then another diagram showed things that weren't there that they were asking to do mm -hmm. I mean this has got to make some sense that we're not going to have to hire a firm to review it absolutely Kevin and I can assure you that I had a discussion with Mr. McGrath and his wetland scientist that it needs to be very clear which each amendment, what the original project was and the mitigation required, which each amendment was and what mitigation was required and what violations are out there and the restoration for those violations. And that has to be incredibly clear. And, and in fact, McGrath. that's one of the issues is that we have to prepare something like nine exhibits. So, and the other thing is the attorney has been not available on certain dates, so that's why we've had one continuance. So, Mike, can you state I'm your name stay. for the record, please? My, my name for the record? Yes. Uh, Michael McGrath. Um, of? Holmes and McGrath. Thank you. Um, Mike, do you feel that, uh, yes, you feel we'll confident right. that August 8th is, is some, a date you can meet, or sh should no, we? No, August 8th is fine. All right. Let's uh, take a vote. Great. All those in favor of the continuance to August 8th, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Okay. Thank Let's you. Let's hope not everything is so complicated tonight. <coughs> All right. Request for determination of applicability. Um, for the benefit of the public and anyone who is not familiar with these, um, the decisions on these, a negative uh, determination is what is favorable to the applicant. That's what they like to hear. It means that they do not have to um, go to a more rigorous review than what's under consideration. Um, so first we have Maureen Fredericks, 11 Lakeway, Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to pump and fill existing leaching pits and replace with Title V sewage disposal system. Yes, Madam Chairman. <clears throat> um, we are requesting a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. So you mean recommend? But, yeah. Excuse me? Yeah, the rec that's the she staff's said. recommendation. She yeah. said she so moved. Requesting. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's I'm right. recommending. That's all right. Um, thank you, Courtney. Se second. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Um, anything from the public? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Um, apologies if this is mispronounced. Marilois Snowman, 21 Mallard Way, North Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to replace broken slats on existing permitted deck. Yes, Madam Chairman, we are recommending. A negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not going to So move. Thank you. And uh, just to, uh, I made a mistake that time. It's a permitted dock, not a deck. Yes. Um, all, any questions or comments from the board? Anything from the public? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. All right. Now we go to requests for hearings under a notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. 
Although a single decision of the commission is <coughs> issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. First NOI is James Clark, 104 Penzance Road, Woods Hall, for permission to perform maintenance to the existing stone riprap wall and to install <coughs> biologs for erosion control. Good evening, Mr. Martin. Thank you, Madam Chair. For the record, David Martin, David Martin Engineering, here on behalf of the property owner. Two parts of this project, one the riprap and one the biologs. I'll start with the riprap. Uh, it's an existing licensed seawall. It appears to me that never in its life has it been maintained whatsoever. Uh, it's full of voids, particularly in the lower tiers of stone. It was built in the days before filter fabric and bedding stone, so it's simply boulders on the slope. Um, <coughs> excuse me, hard, difficult to get access to the site. We can't come by barge. We can't come across the top of the property because of significant vegetation, so the work would be by hand. We're proposing having the contractor wheelbarrow uh, stone chips down the access path and carry them down the beach and place them in the voids. A lot of handwork. But I think it's, it's uh, much better than the do-nothing option. Uh, do-nothing option, the wall is on its way to failure. So filling the voids to whatever extent we can accomplish. Uh, on, on that note, the salt marsh shown in the plan was um, delineated in the fall of the year. Right now, we went to the site today. Uh, it's very significant on the beach, so uh, I think there's an understanding that the work would take place when the salt marsh is dormant, so that time of the year. On the biologs, um, again, our work began in the fall. At that time, there was a, an erosion from the end of the seawall, approximately 90 feet to the bend in the landform. So at that, excuse me, that point, we anticipated putting uh, erosion protection along that length of shoreline. Much to my pleasant surprise, when I went out a couple of weeks ago, uh, more than half of that shoreline had self-healed. It was a low bank. It had stabilized and vegetation had taken over. So what had been, I believe, 90 feet <coughs> is now proposed at 30 feet. Uh, in the area between the access path and the stone, which is mostly probably due to end effects on the seawall. Questions? Thanks, Dave. Jen? Uh, yes, Madam Chairman, I was out there this afternoon with Mr. Martin um, and Commissioner Gladfelder appeared. Um, I was, as Dave said, I was, I was expecting a lot more erosion along that bank. It is pretty stable. Staff's concern was that the installation of the biologs would destabilize what's there in order to stabilize it again. Um, so after having a discussion with Dave, staff ag agreed to a, a reduced erosion control area um, where the biologs were with staff on site prior to them placing them there so we can determine in the fall exactly where to put them. Dave, the one thing I am going to ask is for a revised plan with an updated salt marsh line and a reduced biolog area. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Basically, if you've gone out to the site, it's exactly where, if you really looked at the bank, there's a, um, a like kind of a, a cedar that has come down from that cedar to the revetment, over, and just in that area. Um, other than that, the staff is comfortable meeting the contractors and, and Mr. Martin on site to, to go over the placement with, um, you know, if we feel that it, it really will destabilize the area to um, install the bio logs, we'll say no, if that's acceptable to the board. All right, thanks, Jen. No question. Betsy. I'm, I'm sorry, one small thing. Well, I, let, me ask, let me ask a small thing. Okay. I noticed that the, the stairs were broken. Oh, yes. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. The stairs. Are the same yes. small thing. We, we noticed that uh, today that the stairs are very simple. The two by six stringer notched out treads were 
in there when they were nailed together, there's a number of treads missing. So when add that I, to your revised plan. I'm going to we're proposing to add that to the revised plan. Uh, Sorry should about be those that. Stairs there. Be no. on both sides. Huh? Should those stairs be on both sides? You can't get by the other side because there's a the revetment. I think it's isn't it high enough up? You're talking to Chapter 91. Yeah. Lateral access. Right. Um, there's a stone jetty there, Betsy. I, I believe you just have to crawl up and down the jetty. That's right. right. You have to crawl up or down the the groin to get to the other side. I don't believe at the time it was licensed that it was. Probably has an existing license though. Lateral access was not required at that time. I suspect, based on the style of construction, it's a very early structure. You know, on the order of 60 to 80 years old. Check the license, Dave. It's a more recent license, which is interesting. Yes, it is. So check the license if it requires access. I will access. do that. Thank you. I believe I reviewed it, but I will double check that. Double check, and if it requires the additional uh, additional stairs on the north side, please put them on the revised plan. Absolutely. We need Thank to you. Compliance with the license, certainly. Okay, that was all. That was my question. Thanks, Betsy. Mark, do you have anything else? Yeah, um, I'm not. I didn't quite understand, Jim, what you were talking about. I when I was out there, I didn't see much evidence of any erosion where the roles are proposed to be placed. Is that what the new design we're going to get shows that there won't be any roles or what? What do you mean? Uh, to the left of the actual revetment, the left of the stone yard, to the To the, the left of the path yeah, the we're from, from the seaside to the left, right. yes. Uh, it's a small area now, we're talking about 30 feet. Um, which 30 is, feet starting at the revetment yep, and going almost south. to the well, path. Well, kind of right off the, path, the About 10 feet shy of the path in round numbers. So that's um, the only area. That's the only area that had any hint of. That's right. Yeah, that's what and in, in many ways, we would choose to. Well, clearly, we choose to do to the very least necessary to stabilize the vegetation. That's the goal. So I think we're all headed in the same direction there. Um, but that's a bit higher bank than the remainder of the bank. That bank is on the order of three or four feet. It is devoid, of, mostly devoid of vegetation now. This is a good opportunity to put the rolls at the right slope, not for 45 degrees, but more like 30 degrees, and use foliage in them. And they will quite likely just grow right back, and you won't even know they're there in a few years. Exactly right. That's that exactly our should goal. be the plan. Yeah, that is true. We've had good luck. Um, the contractor that I worked with, Bill Armstrong, and I've done a number of projects together. Perhaps you remember one on the knob just past the stone pier. Um, put a very small installation there, tried to mirror the existing slope, a little organic material, and you can't, if you go there today, you don't see the biologs. Good. It's all revegetated. That's, uh, although right at the top of that slope, there happened to be some nice cedars, which you. The cedars are what the. The property, ones that haven't gone down, you wouldn't the want to. Property them. owner is very attached to those two cedars, and I think that's. <coughs> The major concern in that particular area, he does not so want to lose stay. those cedars. Yeah. Good. That's all. Thank you. Peter? No questions? Kevin? Um, I was just a little curious if you could explain how you're going to do the construction on the uh, Econolars, or whatever you call them. Um, there's no problem with bringing them in. <laughs> And you're not going to have any problem with the the existing vegetation on the site, <laughs> um, you know. Uh, especially no. when you sort of a second question: when you're putting these chips, as you call them, mm -hmm. in, are you going to have to work around all the existing vegetation that's Absolutely there? right, to the maximum extent possible. Um, the site <laughs> looks very different during the winter months than it does now. I could, really couldn't believe it because we looked at it when the foliage was off and it looked fairly straightforward. Like I went back to refresh a couple of weeks ago when we filed and I was like, oh my goodness, we have a different situation here. So it will present itself more clearly during that time of year. Some hand cutting will be necessary. It's all invasive species, but it'll be very discreet where people will be hand carrying two specific voids we're not intending to clear all the vegetation away to have a, 
open work site where um, one of the boulders is as wide as the screen, so we'd be in a void here and we'd be in a void further down there, and cut a little path in, carry the stone in, and hope the re you know the vegetation reestablishes, which I believe it will. Thank you. We can condition that. Hmm? We can condition that if necessary. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kevin. Janie. Nothing to add. All right. Um, Courtney? Yeah. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second. Um, I'm not sure. I think we have a few outstanding things, like the Chapter 91 situation. Like a plan. Yeah. And we need another plan. I would. Um, I would not necessarily recommend keeping it open for that in this case. But no, I don't think that's necessary. The revised plan is going to re have the reduced uh, biolog footprint and updated salt marsh delineation and a note um, on the rebuilt stairs. And if the chapter nine, Dave's going to check, and if the new chapter nine to run requires uh, lateral access, which on this license number, if it's a newer one, you're probably going to have that, then you'll show an additional set of stairs on the north side. Yes. Write this down, Dave. I wrote it down, and I, and I concur. Okay. That, I think that's that the items, level of so. a continuance. Yeah, yeah, you don't need a continuance for this. I, I, I'm out in the field with Dave. I'm perfectly comfortable reviewing the changes. <clears throat> at a staff level. All right. Any uh, other questions or comments from the board? Anything from the public? All right. All those in favor of closing the hearing and taking it under advisement, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So, Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. All right. So moving along. <laughs> Michael McGordy, Cypress Street, from 6 to 18 Cypress Street, East Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to pave a 260-foot section of existing gravel roadway okay. and install a stormwater management system. Yes, Madam Chairman, uh, the form for this project. Yes. Okay. You want me to read it? Please. 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 It's a little difficult to get I this can. out. <laughs> I got it. Mark, Peter, Jamie, Mary, Kevin, Courtney, and Maury. Betsy, you're not on this one. I know I'm not. Mark, Peter. Good evening. Yeah. Mark, Peter, Good evening. Thank you, Madam Chairman. For the record, I'm Bob Rogers with GAF Engineering. I'm representing the applicant this evening. Uh, so just to re refresh the Commission's uh, memory, I think it's been about six weeks uh, since the initial public hearing. So this project is a paving of a uh, existing gravel road. The pavement width is to be 20 feet. And we've provided uh, a drainage system uh, where there is <coughs> presently none in order to improve the drainage conditions uh, at this location. So at the first public hearing, and I'm sure as you'll hear again tonight, um, there's uh, significant concerns um, with parking along this street. Um, the initial design that we had for the drainage system was a grass swale with stone check dams, which went down to our catch basin at the end of pavement prior to um, infiltrating um, a sizable amount of stormwater in these two rows of three Caltech chambers. So a lot of the concerns with parking revolved around uh, the grass swale with the check dams. Would it be able to be maintained? Would the check dams uh, fall apart if people drove over them and so forth? So um, I got together with the applicant and I looked through the stormwater BMPs and uh, we decided just to remove the grass swale, remove the parking as an issue, no more concerns about check dams and grass swale. And so in order to comply with the pre-treatment requirements of suspended solids removal, we added an, an extra structure, um, a drain manhole with a sump, if you will, 
so that now, um, instead of the grass swale, we have a, a Cape Cod berm, a mountable berm. Um, that, so the cross pitch of the road, the Cape Cod berm, directs the storm water into the catch basin. It's a deep sump with a hood. And then we go to a drain manhole with a four foot sump. It's the same structure as a catch basin, except it has a, a frame and a cover on it instead of a frame and a grate. Um, the the Cultec chambers, the R150 XLD chambers, those are still in the design. And so all of these system components are now H20 loading. So if it's the snow plow, the fire truck, the residents, um, the system is not going to be impacted from traffic in any way. Um, so there is still a concern, I understand, about parking. And so I would just say this, um, on a 20-foot road, which is the minimum width under state code for fire apparatus, um, you normally, a planning board member would be looking at this and saying, I want that 10-foot shoulder clear cut. I want enough space so that if um, a vehicle on this road needs to avoid an emergency vehicle, an ambulance, a fire truck, if it's a large snow plow, if it's a dump truck, a trash truck, um, you need a place to, to pull off. And, you know, if you look at um, all the driveways, these small lots, uh, dwelling number six at the end of the pavement of the project, the driveway is um, directly opposite that drainage system. So we are extremely resistant to any type of barrier being put along this section of the road uh, for public safety reasons. There's, there is no environmental reason to put any obstructions in the shoulder of this road. Um, so we would respectfully ask uh, that you approve this plan uh, this evening. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Mark? Madam Chairman, can I make um, a few comments? Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Just because there's a, a, lot of different, um, a lot of different issues that don't involve this board, yes. um, I want to just make my comments very clear. I spoke with counsel. I know that um, there is some, um, that you've received some letters from the abutters attorney <coughs> requesting that this order not be placed on their property. According to your counsel, this is a private road. Um, the property owners own to, or I have a fee interest into the center of the road, and any time we've had a paving project like this or an improvement project on a road on a private road, the order of conditions has been recorded on each of the properties. So each of the, it's going to be, all the properties within the A flood zone, um, which it looks like maybe the properties on this side of the road, an existing dwelling number six and ten, all need to be recorded. Uh, the D, uh, order of conditions <coughs> all need to be recorded on those deeds if it's <coughs> recorded on those deeds, then the project can't go forward on the portion of the road. Um, also, the board should consider um, protecting that drainage system. <coughs> um, Mr. Rogers, you said it's an infiltration, it's underground, H20 load. What's going to be on top of it? Correct. It's going to be uh, a foot and a half of soil, four inches of loam and <coughs> Okay. So they're suitable for a traffic area. This is a non-traffic area, but if for any reason someone needs to uh, pull off the edge of the road, you know, I mean, everyone, we drive over catch basins and drain manholes all day long, um, but we, if we specify these chambers underneath commercial parking lots um, with no more than a foot of cover. So, um, you know, it's got, uh, it's got at least a foot and a half of cover, but it's just gonna be low and seed over uh, over those infiltration chambers around the drain manhole um, and the catch basin gets pavement around it just to improve the collection capability. Okay, and how deep is that drainage, that 
at four foot. So how much of an overdig are we talking about to install the system? Because you're right on that property line. Yeah, exactly. The, so there's one foot of stone around those chambers, obviously. So the, cl the clearing needs to be done, and the chambers need to be put in. The drainage system needs to be put in prior to the pavement. My question is, is how deep is this drainage system? Sure. So if you look at the at the grades mm -hmm. at the uh, east end of the chambers, is at uh, contour ten, mm -hmm. and then there's a, a nine. And if you look at the 10 inch inverts, it's down around six. Okay. Uh, the chambers are a foot and a half. So, um, you know, it's, it's um, shown on a uh, on detail sheet, on detail sheet four. Yeah. So the inverts are to the bottom of the chambers. And the chambers are 18 inches high. So roughly. Uh, what my question so is, a foot and a half how, how deep high. is your excavation to put this in? Because you are literally... True. We're, well, we're going from nine to five. We're going four feet. Four feet. Yep. And you can dig a four foot area on a 20 scale. Well, if, if um, Jen, if we're talking about a disturbance on an abutter's property, it, it really isn't because the drainage system and the paving is part of the agreement between the neighbors. And it being a private street, the ownership is to set up to the center line of the road. Okay. So if there is a temporary encroachment for a drainage improvement, we would expect that that would be acceptable, we hope. Well, I guess you'll find that out. <laughs> um, well, sure, okay, sure. I'm just, I'm just, just wondering what your overdate was. Yeah. That's, that's all. Yeah. Okay. So that's just, fine. Yeah. Just point out um, one <coughs> more, one more thing. On sheet three, on the post construction operation and maintenance plan, um, the first paragraph of that clearly identifies the McGurdy family, their successors, and assigns as the sole party responsible for the maintenance of the system. So okay. We, We've, we've uh, changed our plan to make that clear. And one other question, Bob. Do you have your, your um, hay bale and siltation fence barrier detail on page three? Correct. Am I missing it somewhere? It's on three, yeah. No, no, no. I'm, am I missing it on the plan view? Oh. Uh, I just not see it. No, it's, it's, we, we had to get it down far enough so that we still had the turnaround. So it's, it's um, all the way down at the end of the gravel turnaround is the hay bale siltation control. You see it down by the little bay street? Oh, where that's going. On sheet two? Yeah. Yeah, we, um, you know, we can't put it and, no, and block access it, to the turnaround. Uh, so I we see put it down. Bank. So proposed path. erosion control barrier, right? The, the oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, thank you. Yep. That's it, madam. Thank you, uh, Mark. Um, there's no restriction on parking on the south side of the street. Is that right? It's a private road, and it's been a, a, a semi-private dispute for ongoing. Um, it's, and I think, you know, it's going to be litigated in some other forum. But, um, you know, if you don't want parking on the side of the street, you put up a no parking sign. You don't prevent someone from being able to safely get out of the road if there's an emergency vehicle coming in. Well, I noticed that the north side, the fences are well within the street right of way. So it looks right. like there's no room to park on the north side. And those Beyond fences are blocking emergency access around emergency access vehicles. The fences. I don't know that's, I'm looking at. I'm just trying to make sure the overhead. There's overhead wire which yeah, should not be construed as a fence. There's there are some that are sort of halfway. In fact, it looks like they're right on the lines of the fence. <clears throat> sure, I can park, see. You can park between them easily enough if there weren't any fences in the way. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, I can see why people chose to park on the south side of the street because there's no room on the north side. But it's probably not too good for the owner on the south side. 
but at least the swale won't get in their way if they choose to hop over that, uh, what you call it. Yeah, they still, I believe they still want to have uh, a driveway somewhere, um, somewhere on the east end, and then of course there's that uh, separate lot down at the very end. That, that's beyond um, the end of our pavement. Okay, I don't have anything else. Peter? No questions. Kevin, you're not on the corner, or are you? No, it is. Yes, I'm yes, sorry. Do you have any questions? Well, uh, just one wise guy question. You wouldn't have to know how uh, long the existing tree platform has been existing. <coughs> I, I don't know myself. I do not personally know that. And again, the only thing I do know from seeing it is that it's a freestanding uh, piece of wood. There's no nails, there's no bolts, there's no damage to the tree. Um, I think I referred to it as a, as a wildlife no viewing stand before. I I'm sure it's more for the young folks and the kids. Um, but it's, um, it, is, it is where it, it is. is where it is. And it will be removed. Well, if you want to put that as a special condition I in this order. I think that might be a good idea. Yeah. There's no I just permit don't for see the, the harm. Well, I don't see why they didn't request a permit if there was no harm. It's an unpermitted structure in the jurisdiction of this conservation commission. I'd have to look at the definition of a structure in town. Oh, we have our own definition. Yes, everyone does. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Kevin. Jamie? That's, oh, I'm not on the court. Courtney. No questions. All right. Um, I'll move to close a hearing and take it under advisement. All right. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Um, is there any other comments from the board at this time? No. All right. Uh, comments from the public? Sorry. <coughs> Good evening, Your Reference is Tom Bunker, the assessed design. I represent uh, the Sandlin family who has the land on the south side of Thoreau. And uh, just here uh, to make sure that uh, uh, the project was properly conditioned uh, as, as Jen was speaking to protect the barn, protect the drainage area, and protect the uh, property rights of the Sandlin. Um, there were a couple small uh, you know, maybe inconsistencies in there that uh, we have to make sure of. And one is in the typical, typical road section, uh, it, is, it, it shows a, a, a flat shoulder on the south side of the road, where, in fact, according to the grading, it, it does go up. I didn't know if that, as long as there's no confusion during construction, but that's uh, um, you know, one inconsistency that uh, uh, should be considered during construction. Um, Bob did mention that the uh, system will be grassed over. That was one of our questions on the detail. It says either paved or grassed. And uh, as we say now, that it will be grassed and not paved. And that was one of the concerns. Um, and as I said, we'd like some uh, protection for that slope, uh, partly to make sure it's not driven on, uh, driven on or parked on. But Emergency vehicles, but um, frankly, this is at the end of the road, and, and there is a turnaround further down where somebody could pull off if an emergency vehicle was coming that far down the road. Uh, but it, it sounds like I mean there are some there are some letters submitted to you with our concerns in it, and uh, we just like to make sure that you consider <coughs> consider these things uh, when you're deliberating and writing your conditions. All right, thank you, Tom. Uh, would anyone else like to speak on this project? Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Michael McGurdy. I'm the applicant. Uh, a couple things. Um, our plan was reviewed by all the homeowners on Cypress Street, and they all support it 100%. Many couldn't be here this evening. That would include the uh, <clears throat> Uh, the Milios, the O'Maras, the Gallagher's, the Marstons, the McMackins, obviously the McGurdys, and the Witchermans. We've all lived on that street for for average uh, over 30 years of all the families. Um, 
the area where they're putting in the drainage basin and the, the uh, <coughs> collection area is directly across the street from uh, my mother's house, uh, Six Cypress Street. I know there's been some talk about putting barriers in there, and uh, that's the reason we had the plans redesigned so that we wouldn't have to go through um, installation of barriers and so forth. Uh, my mother is an older woman. Um, I'm not suggesting her driving abilities are bad. I'm just, uh, her driveway's tight to a telephone pole when she comes out. She needs the full width of the roadway sometimes to make the turn to get in. And um, I think our plan uh, takes into consideration all those, those items down there and we would uh, truly um, ask the board not to consider putting or having that added to this plan. It would change the outlook of the, the whole roadway and the use of it. Um, we talk about the grass strip on the other side. Um, it's grass now. If you've gone down there from 14 Cypress Street down, it's grassed area there. Um, I have been maintaining that area for over 40 years. Um, probably a little longer um, and um, we make sure that it's um, kept fairly well uh, it's not abused um, and so um, we're hoping to move this project forward you can see that we're adding to a road that was approved for a subdivision that ended uh, in the middle of number 18 Cypress Street and we have uh, drainage issues now where it's, you know, the runoff is coming down the street, so they're still working on the existing project to straighten that out. Um, hopefully they'll get that corrected, and then when we add our road to it, we'll be able to pick up the difference going down. The road we're proposing is very similar in width and Cape Cod berm, and it will just be a continuous roadway to the end. Not all the way to the end, because I had said before we pulled it back, um, so that there would be additional drainage area for any runoff or anything like that before it got to the uh, little pond. So um, I just would uh, ask the board not to impose those restrictions. I'd have to go home and tell my mother, and that's not going to be a pleasant process. Um, she doesn't deserve it. She's owned that house. She's owned most of the houses on that street at one time or another. We'll maintain it. We won't abuse it. Um, I just ask the board to please consider that. Um, it's a that's a that's a big decision on our part on moving forward with the project. So I just uh, respectfully request that you consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Any, would anyone else like to speak? Yes. Sir. <coughs> <coughs> Hi, my name is Trent Sandlin. I own, with my family, the other side of the street. We've owned that property for since 1913, as well as our neighbor's property back then, and my grandfather sold that side of the street back in the early 60s. The parking, for them to say it's just to pull off, they, Michael's family has been parking on that side even this last weekend. We had clover paving to our part of the road up above. They sorted it, and the cars are parking on the side. So for me to think that they're going to stop parking once they put in the drain, that's just not going to happen. That's, that's one of the reasons why we're concerned about the drainage on that side. The, the parking will not stop unless something prohibits it. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else from the public? Anything from the board? All right, we have a motion and a second. Close the hearing, take it under advisement. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, unanimous, so moved. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next we have Jeffrey and Francis Eason. 51 Bryant Point Road, northbound of Massachusetts, for permission to reconstruct an existing deck, construct a two-story addition of Lowstone <coughs> patio, 
plant mitigation plantings and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. One second, no, no. You want to know who the yes, want to know who's on it? Oh yeah, Kevin, Betsy, Jamie, Peter, Mark. Great. I'm not on the forum, but I will continue to direct traffic on the discussion. Good evening. I'm Emma Botour with Blue Flags Design. I'm representing the property owners at 51 Bryant Point Road. Unfortunately, Mike Borselli of Falmouth Engineering couldn't be with us tonight, but I have a list of changes that were made um, to his plan, and I'm gonna keep the presentation fairly brief, um, just reviewing the changes that were made since the last hearing. Um, Could you, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. Yes. Could you possibly speak just a little bit louder? I'm oh, sure. A little difficult. Okay, Thank sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna review the changes that were made since the last hearing. Um, May 16th. Um, so start with Falmouth Engineering added the following to their site plan. Um, they added the as-built location of the septic system. They changed the limit of work from silt fence to straw bales. They are now showing a setback uh, to both the top of Coastal Bank and Salt Marsh from the existing deck steps. <coughs> They've adjusted the proposed patio by reducing its size to make sure it's no closer to the salt marsh or top of bank than the existing um, deck steps. So subsequently, they also adjusted the mitigation, in, um, the required mitigation in response to the change in the size of the patio. Um, it's now 229 square feet and the required mitigation is 687 square feet. Um, but I'd also like to note that we're not proposing to change the amount of mitigation that we're providing. We're still providing 867 square feet of mitigation. Um, and then Falmouth Engineering has also restaked the salt marsh line. And um, moving on to some of the changes that were made to the Blue Flax de um, design planting plan. Um, there were some concerns about removing the 20 inch pitch pine on the south side of the house and mitigating with one cedar. So we've since uh, added two cedars and one eastern red bud um, within zone A. Um, it was also noted that there was one tree removed from zone A by previous owners without record of permission. And to mitigate for this, we've added one pitch pine also in zone A to the coastal bank. And shrub plantings were adjusted accordingly um, to account for these new trees. Um, and then we've also added a single split rail fence um, along the mitigation areas to minimize disturbance to um, mitigation plantings. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Um, Jen, one question. Um, is Eastern Red Bud on the Cape Cod um, Cooperative's plant list for Cape Cod? Cooperative. The Cooperative's plant list. I do not have an answer for that. But I will. Okay. Well, we'll it I'll is. check. If it's on mm -hmm. there, fine. If it's not, we'll probably have you replace it with something else. Okay? Okay. Thank you. That's it, Madam Jen. Thanks, Jen. Um, that's it. I have no questions. Thanks for addressing those. Sorry? I have no questions. Thanks for addressing okay. our concerns. Thank you. Courtney? Oh, he's not on it. Oh, I'm not on the quorum. Uh, Jane? No questions. No questions. No questions. No questions. No questions. Put a motion on the table to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second. Any, anyone in the public here to comment on this project? All right. All those in favor of closing the hearing and taking under advisement, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next NOI. Excuse Will you? One second, Madam Chairman. All right. Close. She just gives you. Can you just give Susan the last name? Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry, Madam Chairman. That's all right.
This one. Next we have William Newton, 46 Waterside Avenue, Falmouth, Massachusetts. For permission to upgrade existing wastewater treatment system and to remove and replace invasive species with native species along with all associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Good Sorry. evening, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. Seth Wilkinson, Wilkinson Ecological Design. Uh, with me in the audience is Ben Wolman, Project Manager. Dan Samartano. Um, I'm sorry, it must be me tonight. I've, I've had a cold day in my ears are but if you could speak sure thing. a little louder. Thank I, was, you. I hesitate to yell at you, but um, I'll start over. Uh, Seth Wilkinson, Wilkinson Ecological Design. Uh, with me in the audience is Ben Woolman and Dan Samartano, as well as Mike McGrath, engineer on the project, and applicant David Newton. Uh, this project is presently um, has been been modified a couple of times before opening the hearing. Had a great dialogue with staff. I think uh, with each iteration, and there have been two plan revisions prior to the opening of the hearing. Um, the project's been improved as a result of those um, discussions and plan changes. Um, and most recently, the uh, septic system component um, has been removed from the. The filing. So at this point, this is purely a uh, ecological restoration project. Um, the uh, project area, um, which is about a half an acre, just over 20,000 square feet, is uh, comprised of uh, an emergent marsh. Uh, it's actually a little bit of open water on Palmer's Pond, and then an emergent marsh transitioning to a wet meadow uh, to a, a buffer zone community. And um, there's an existing residence um, at one corner of the lot closest to the road at the north end, and the primary residence at the south corner of the property in the upland. Um, the, both the wetland and the upland, I'm afraid, are uh, moderately to severely invaded. The wetland is more moderately invaded. It has uh, Phragmites and purple loose rife present, um, primary invasives. All of those are proposed to be managed uh, in a very um, environmentally sensitive manner, essentially stem by stem, without the use of foliar spray. Um, purple loose, loose strife will also be treated and eradicated. Uh, there is a healthy uh, <coughs> cattail dominated marsh, um, and it's expected that, that that plant grows rapidly, and that will continue to proliferate without the competition of the invasive species to the benefit of species like red winged red -wing blackbird, muskrat, and many others. Um, the upland has a, a severe invasion uh, of, of uh, <coughs> woody, primarily woody species, although some of the Phragmites and purple loose strife certainly creeps into the upland as well. It's predominated by uh, shrub form honeysuckle, Asiatic bittersweet, border privet, autumn olive, among others. Uh, the, the, the land historically, uh, not, not by the applicant uh, and the owner, um, has been sort of dumped, um, as we unfortunately see many buffer zones, the edge of a road. People think it's okay to dump yard waste and debris. Um, that will all be removed uh, as part of this project. Uh, it, it is well vegetated considering the, the, the past cultural practices, which I think probably go back many decades. And uh, the existing native vegetation, of which there is, uh, there is some, primarily, um, Arrowwood by Burnham and Elderberry are both uh, surviving amongst the thicket of invasives. Those will all be preserved. No, no native species will be impacted at all with the, uh, with the uh, program that's, that's in place in a detailed land, land management plan. Um, the correct copy, just so everyone's on the same page, should have an uh, original date of April 12th and the uh, final revision date of June 1, which has increased the restoration areas and incorporated the changes in, in plant community. Um, speaking of plant community, we have um, started off with more of a wet meadow dominated um, plant community for the restoration. Um, there was some of that in, in, in the um, remaining. It was limited, so that'll be appropriate to, re to uh, replace that and restore that. Um, in, in collaboration with staff, um, felt that more woody species should be incorporated some more of a uh, shrub, what would be classified as a shrub scrub wetland, 
or a shrub wetland. And uh, so there's still elements, the wet, the wet meadow species will still be in the, in the herbaceous layer, but there'll be more, uh, considerably more um, uh, shrubs and trees and proposed in the, in the wetland. In total, it's over 500, um, 552 native shrubs proposed, up to three gallon size. Uh, four native trees um, are proposed, primarily tupelo. There are some, tup some planted tupelo. Some, there may be some, na some naturally growing tupelo, but there are some tupelo which are thriving in the site, but they appear to have been planted probably about 10 to 15 years ago. And they're doing well. Those will all be protected as well. And um, the, uh, there'll be, as I said, one, one, gray, one gray willow will, will be, um, I'm oh, sorry, not gray willow. One gray birch uh, will be proposed. It's appropriate for this plant community, provide a little extra um, diversity, biological diversity. There'll also be the, uh, the additional tupelos being proposed. And uh, in the event that we do find any Asian gray willow, which is not a species and invasive species, we, we don't want to see at this site. Uh, early indications looked like we did not have the atrocenaria or scenario, the, the uh, Asian gray willow. I took a second look at it, had some concerns, discussed it with staff, conservation biologists, then I'll have to check it a second, so, second time. As the, as the plant sort of evolves throughout the growing season, it's a little easier to identify. It does hybridize with our native pussy willow, and so it can be challenging to identify. Um, we're pretty confident it is not Asian gray willow at this point. However, if it later on in the season, it's, it's positively ID'd. We discussed that with staff, and we're proposed to remove that and then replace that uh, one for one with native trees. Um, to uh, remove the invasive species and replace it with another, with another species. We don't think that's going to happen, but happy to offer that. Um, more housekeeping matters as we get closer to the dwellings. Um, Holmes and Grath provide a thorough review of the record and past filings. Um, there, there is an existing uh, bed along the, uh, the, the cottage residence closer to, the, uh, to Clinton Avenue uh, to the north. Um, it had some ornamental species uh, it, within that bed. Those would all be removed and it would be planted purely with native species, which is specified on the plan. Also, there was some uh, lawn, which the applicant was not aware of, was not permitted, not, not a huge amount, but down towards the main residence at the southern corner. Um, that is now shown as uh, dense planting of arrowwood, sweet pepper bush, black chokeberry, Carolina rose, Sweet pepper bush. I said that species twice. It's in there twice. Um, so that that uh, buffer has been broadened even wider than it was proposed initially. Um, again, the plant count is uh, 552 native shrubs, at least four native trees, 300, 305 planted native herbaceous species uh, to aid in those interstitial places, spaces underneath the, uh, the woody plants, and then of course all native plants will remain that were proposed. Detailed planting specifications um, on the plan, and again, the plan, plan revision date um, is 6 1 18 as well. The original date was 5 18 18. Pick the land with the plan, we don't have kind of time. There's uh, characterization of the plan community, threats in the form of invasive species, regulatory compliance diagrams, detailed appendix. Detailed land management plan, scientific references on the last page. I think all the bases are covered there. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions the commission may have. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, Courtney. Oh, I'm sorry, Jen. No, <laughs> it's, I just have questions? one clarification. Uh, I just need a clarification. Seth, thank you for the revisions. Um, thank you for the comments. You, you made my staff very happy, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, the area that you said was lawn by the main residence. Is that the one that's black dots, not green dots? Probably it's, 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 it's yeah, it's, it's yes. this area. Just yes, so, so I that, cited that was correctly yep, exactly. in the findings. Okay. Yep, precisely. Okay, thank you. Um, and is there anywhere uh, is there anywhere on the land that you um, talk about whether or not if that turns out to be, what did you say? Oh, yeah, got it. Gray Willis. Very last. Um, 
You've got two seven. Yeah, down I just here, noticed so that myself. <laughs> you have two seven, so we'll call it seven A. Seven A. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jen. Courtney. No questions. Nice project. That's it. Yeah, this has the potential to be nice wetland restoration. Jamie. Pretty aggressive plan. Mm -hmm. uh, did the variance, if you said this, I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. Did, did the variance requests get approved for the rock system? No. 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 Not yet. We're going to refile. Where's the rock stand for? Uh, Jamie, do you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> no, now you don't. Oh, no, we didn't want to go. Rain. Okay, <laughs> all you needed to hear was no. Rain, Ursula, Corrine, and Karen. Rain Locke was the inventor, and that's the first name of his family. That's all we need to know. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Don't worry. That's all I, that's all I do. <laughs> no questions. <laughs> no questions. Mark. How do you clear out all the non negative native vegetation? Somebody went there with a. What are you going yeah. with a. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, well, for job, I can't answer. Um, uh, it is a combination. Um, the, all of the work in the wetland is done by hand. Um, in the wetlands. In the wetlands. Yeah, I'm just working my way out from the wetland. Uh, we, we actually pull a non-motorized wick over the Phragmites uh, to treat those. Um, there is a combination of very low ground pressure, basically the same ground pressure that I put down on a size 10 shoe. I disclose my weight, 175 pounds. Um, you can all calculate your own PSI if that's how you do it. Just square inches of your feet versus how much you weigh. That's your PSI. Um, so I'm, I'm around three PSI. Um, some are more, some are less. Um, the smaller your shoe, the higher your PSI. Um, the equipment that we use is in that same neighborhood. So it's just about the same as a human foot because it's wide track, um, good weight dispersal, so we don't do any soil compaction. Um, it's very small equipment. Uh, but the idea is to take it. All out. Take all the invasive species. Uh, we have we have skilled skilled technicians uh, certified um, to work with invasive plants, among many other things. Um, they're all experts in plant identification, and they can definitely tell the difference between an elderberry, for example, and a shrub honeysuckle or privet, which you know a typical landscaper may struggle struggle with that. So it's not so dense that you can't. Um, Ne negotiate the equipment. It's typically a mini excavator, so I can reach over, around, traverse, um, and then if it's too thick, uh, it's all done by hand. So you know, it's really heavy foliage, as you know, it's very dense. Very it's dense, but it's dense. primarily dense with invasive species. So if you pick your path carefully and, and, and don't damage any of the native species, and get a great track record for doing, doing that good job. Thank you. That's so excellent question. Thank you, Mark. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advice. Second. Thank you. Anything else from the board? Anything from the public on this project? Great. Um, all those in favor of closing the hearing, taking it under advisement, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Thank you, Senator. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Wilkinson. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, David. Thank you. No. All right. Do they have the air conditioning on it? Yes. Yeah. Of course, it's summertime. Didn't you know? Oh, it's on my polar outfit. I know. It's ridiculous. I got right. my wrist slapped. Um, our next. We're changing the thermometer. Hearing. Anthony Cipro, 91 Bywater Court, Bound, Massachusetts, for permission to reconfigure the existing driveway and install required mitigation plantings. Good evening. For the record, my name is Wayne Tavares, Wet Tech Land Design, <coughs> representing Mr. Cipro on a plan that was drawn by um, Steve Doyle. Uh, Steve went through this pretty intensively. Oh, I apologize for last week. I didn't have it staked out. So, I guess you can back charge me. Um, Steve has done all the calculations for the driveway in the A and B zone. 
It's a pervious driveway, similar to what you saw when you went out there. Uh, each area in the A and each area in the B has been calculated using the two to one or three to one formula to come up with a proper mitigation. There's 630 square feet of new driveway and the mitigation, the corresponding mitigation, comes out to 1,299 square feet. And there is a planting bed um, proposed for along the top of the revetment along the Fresh River that's 1,300 square feet. Um, we've used the proper spacing as required from found regulation. Uh, we've used the proper plants, we believe. And um, we hope the board keeps in mind that you're losing not only 630 square feet of lawn area, it's been changed into an inert product, namely stone for the driveway, but also eventually you'll gain back the whole 1,300 square feet, an additional 1,300 square feet of, of lawn area being cut out for the, um, the planting. We're trying to do planting in a little bit more sustainable manner. So we're planting these through the sod. We have not, not mulch fans or fans of mulch. And we would leave some of the grass in between the plants to be mowed until the plants grow large enough to shade it out. <coughs> and then the sod and the rooting system of this dead sod would become the proper mulch. So it's a little bit more of a sustainable project. But that's it, in essence. And the reason for the reconfiguration is the Cipro family owns the three lots, well, two adjacent lots on either side of the main house lot. <coughs> and uh, because they owned it all, they just took the land and they made a big driveway out of it across the property. And now the brother is anxious to sell the adjacent property, so the driveway has to be configured and kept onto the site that it belongs. That's it. Thank you. Any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Thank you, Mr. Twice. Um, Jen? Yes, um, Wayne, uh, what's the spacing between the plants? Spacing is whatever you had on your chart. I think it's four feet for viburnum. There's one in there that's three feet, and I can't remember what it is. Everything's four feet except for that. What chart are you referring to? Uh, the chart that uh, we used to use in the old days, we sat down with Barstable County. The chart you referred to in a prior meeting, I was on a board that came up to, yes. So okay. Um, we may, in some cases, <coughs> Especially with the uh, little bit blueberry, try to tighten that spacing up so you may I think that's the provide one additional. Because um, yeah. this board usually does three feet on the center. Mm -hmm. um, I was asking if it was on the list. I, you know, that's you know, we loosely follow that list. It's not something that this board I sometimes really refers to. They usually prefer to see a, a three-foot spacing requirement. You're proposing 72 shrubs in a 1,300 square feet area. So that, that spacing is fairly large. Um, also, you need do need to provide, Betsy, two trees, one per every 1,000 feet, yeah. 1,000 square feet. So one and then two. So you do need to provide two um, tree species in there as well per the Thelma Butlin regulations. Yeah, I had heard about that. I was hoping to that all this mitigation removal of some almost 2,000 square feet of grass permeable solution that we could assuage a little bit here how to uh, remove trees from an area that basically doesn't have them. You've got a tremendous oak that's on that site that probably speaks for all the trees in the neighborhood. And uh, to put a couple of trees out by Fresh River, when you got such amount of shrubbery and you've gained so much less lawn to either fertilize or mow, you're in your case, to you're, fertilize. Even, you're, you're fertil not supposed to fertilize in Falma. It's a Falma friendly lawn. You can't no, fertilize we don't have Falma friendly lawn anymore. No, we have we have a nitrogen control by law now. Yeah, I know you do, but it's it, it, it allows for no fertilization whatsoever. Um, it, there it, there are time of time restrictions. Your restrictions. I, yeah. Um, and restrictions within 100 feet. Um, what's the driveway expansion again, Wayne? Um, in the blue, I mean, you can see this plan here. 
No, so no, I, I see that. What is what is it? Is it pavement? If I missed it, I apologize. Yeah, crushed. it was crushed down. It's the stone. same stone that you see when you went out. Existing, there. okay, existing crushed down. Yeah. So you're removing lawn. Mm -hmm. You're increasing the impervious surface or pervious surface that doesn't support natural vegetation, and you want the board to waive the tree requirement? Well, that and from accommodation of the 1,300 square foot eventual uh, loss of... Uh, That's uh, not going to happen. Let's <laughs> just move on. It's required. Everybody does it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Does everybody understand the Wait. expansion of the lawn? But anyhow, I have this color in here for those of you who may not have seen it. The green area is belongs to the other lot. The blue area is the area of expansion due to that. And the purple area is existing. So, okay. So you're looking for a revised plan? For we can condition. We can, we can condition it, but please, okay. you know, advise your client that the spacing may be tightened up. Um, so additional shrubs may be required to fill in that 1,300 square feet. I don't think I can be more clear than that. Okay. And the requirement for the two trees um, within, you know, the buffer zone to, fre uh, to Fresh River um, will be required. So the trees will not be placed in the back corner of the property. They will be put in the area of mitigation planting. Okay. Okay. All right. But the board will deliberate and see what they would like to do. Okay, can I provide a table? Because I, I'm used to doing tables. I didn't think I had to do it this time. It shows spacing. It'll show the area required. Because I'm pretty sure I used that table for, to come up with these calculations. Are you asking for a continuance? No. And I just said, Wayne, that if you're talking about the table cooperative put out, this board loosely follows that and sometimes requires a three feet on center yes. mitigation as opposed to four. It's going to be the board's decision. Yeah. So you may have to submit a revised plan when the order is issued in showing yeah. additional shrubs. Yeah. And, okay. and I heard you on that. What okay, I was saying, good. I may have used the three foot. No, that's fine. Yeah. You can, um, but I mean, if you want us to close the hearing, I can't take any additional information. From yeah, okay. Right. Let's close the hearing. Okay. Please. I'll, I'll make a motion to close it. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Procedure, yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, Courtney. No questions. Betsy. Well, then, since it comes to me, I do have a comment. It's to your client's benefit to have this, this vegetation by fresh river. That river sometimes floods. And it's digging. I've heard. Yes. Well, and it's digging away at the at the um, bank, and it's. He's not opposed to it. Well, I'm just saying it's it's going to make it much better environmentally, and also safety wise for him to have that vegetated buffer and to have those trees there. So okay. that's my only comment. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> Kevin. All set. Peter. Yes, I have a question. Uh, the lot 15, the southern boundary with the big, big tree, maybe a steel tree, uh, right by the... Yeah, the huge tree, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, looks like the uh, proposed crushed stone driveway will be a lot closer to the tree trunk and roots than the existing crushed stone driveway. And I was wondering what would be the construction techniques to save the roots for that tree? Uh, that was a good question because when I staked it out, I came up with the same conclusion. Uh, that's a black oak and uh, the roots there usually go down. So uh, his contractor who t maintains the property is going to be doing the site. So we can pass on, or you can write a contingency in here that when we do this, we can use an air spade. We can hand dig, hand dig the, the shape of this before equipment comes in there and, and damages any roots. How deep would be the base for the gravel? This gravel? is a real Falmouth uh, type of driveway, and it's only about three inches of stone. There's no base to it whatsoever. So he's only going down about, I'd, I'd give it five inches tops, just enough to 
uh, to cover it. And that's what he has there for a driveway right now. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mark. No comments. Okay. I'll make a motion to. I, I have one question. Jane, and this question is for Wayne and Jamie. Wayne, you just said there's no base, so they're not putting any dense grade down under the crushed stone? They don't have it there now. Jamie, is that how these are usually done? Sorry. Hmm? Sorry. Um, is, when somebody installs a gravel driveway, do they usually put down a dense grain base or not, or is it optional? Typically, yes. Typically, yes. I so mean, if we conditioned it that there's no dense grade, that's going to be okay with contractors? For the old shape of the driveway, yes. He might, he might want to do it for the rest. I don't know, but I'd like to... For what shape of the driveway, the old or the new? The old. At that point where the root system of the oak is more close to the driveway. There's other parts of it that he may choose it. You know he's made a mistake. He got a little adventurous, adventurous down there and changed the shape for those of you who may notice that I painted it on the driveway. And I told him that wasn't a thing to do. But he built that driveway the same way it was built before by moving stone from the driveway from here to there. So essentially, what I'm saying is correct. Essentially, what Jamie is saying is correct. He knows as an engineer, landscape architect myself, that that's the way we would spec a driveway. Mm -hmm. But in this case, using the type of stone that he has, they lock together tightly. He's happy with the surface that it is. It's on a level surface. There is no problems. I, I, I don't see it. I could see you putting three inches of stone and no base in there, but we would follow any regulation or, or contingency that you would have. I think the condition that this is what came before us. So that's how, that's the condition. And if there, you, he wants a difference in the other part of it, he would have to come back. Exactly, you'd have to come back for an amendment or what have you, sure. Yeah. But sure. It's, your, it's your testimony that driveway expansion area one is, or and two is not gonna have any dense grade under it. In that section, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Putting a motion on the table to close this and take it under advisement. Second. Any other uh, comments or questions from the board? Mm -hmm. Anything from the public? Okay. Um, hearing nothing. All those in favor of closing the hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. So you can use mine. All right. Um, next, continued request to amend the existing order of conditions. Wigwam Sipawissa Trust, 8 Wigwam Road. This has been continued to August 8th. Request to extend the existing order of conditions. <laughs> Seascape Association, Inc., Waterside Drive, B Beach, North Falmouth, Massachusetts, DEP. 25-3504, requesting a three-year extension. Yes, Madam Chairman. <laughs> this order of conditions has been, uh, was issued in June of 2008. Mm -hmm. um, the board, uh, the staff is, you've issued three-year extensions in the past. Um, the board, the staff is not comfortable doing it again. Um, I attempted to reach out to, to the applicant and I couldn't reach them. So at this point, we would can, uh, recommend a one-year extension with them filing a new notice of intent next year. It's basically a beach maintenance issue, but you should have an updated profile and survey of that beach. Is that's this the right one with height. the walkway? Mm -hmm. that we no, that, that's A. This is oh. B. This is down further. Oh, this is okay. at the end of um, where fiddlers always sometimes so as you puts go the in, dredge spoils. First one's there. It's down yes, this, this is right. down the road. <clears throat> have our have our regulations changed since 2008? They haven't changed. I'm not saying that there's new regulations. I'm saying this board should have an updated survey and profile of that area. Could we require that as a condition for extending the existing order conditions? Well, I would want to see what that survey and profile kind of 
show us before I would allow the same same conditions on a, a new survey? It, it, you're, it asking become, me, you're asking me yeah. to condition it the same yeah. way blind well, and um, can't do that. No. So maybe an alternative to refiling a full order would be to extend this for one year well, that's with the requirement that they provide this profile. If you're comfortable with it, then they can extend it a little further. I think that's what she proposed, isn't it? No, I no, proposed a one-year extension with the oh, new oh, filing Oh, so they can refile. Yes, yeah, refile. The motion is, so your motion would be, you ready, Susan? Yeah, I'll re To extend this for one year and provide um, a beach, beach profile profiles. as as required by as suggested right and if if then they can come back and extend it if you're okay with the profile that it hasn't changed or whatever in other words if it if the conditions have changed then we can well, not extend years. it again it's after 10 the years there could be other it, conditions it's 11 have changed. years by yeah. the time you see this again that beach has changed it's unlikely that it won't change. Yeah. okay susan I'm going to restate my motion. I make a motion to extend for one year. Second. I'll second it. Uh, it's been seconded by Jamie, but thanks, Courtney. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments from the board? Anything from the public? All those in favor of a one year extension say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So. Right, now we move on to voting orders of conditions. Um, we have yeah, another beach. Yeah, we have quite a few. Um, beginning with 59 Davis Neck Road, White Sands Association. Um, um, Madam Chairman, um, would it be possible to just ask the people in the audience if they're waiting for the Alma Road or a different order of conditions and skip to those so I I would not have a problem with that um, is, uh, is everybody is here there, for yeah. Alma Road in Worcester Court no. No. okay okay well, now I just want I just didn't want everybody to sit through everything um, I guess we'll just go through it as it's done kind of well, so the question is, are okay. the McCordys thinking that we're going to consider their thing tonight? I see him. No, we, we won't be deliberating tonight. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess that leaves us with the ability to. So if they're, they're leaving. Oh, okay. Right. So we are down. So we, yes, that's what people. I'm in the middle of saying, Betsy. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do Worcester Court first? Yes. Okay. All right. So I, I, I guess I uh, need a motion to take this out of order. I make a motion to move down to Worcester Court and take the others afterwards. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Aye. So moved. Um, no, you're not on the form. You don't, I mean. Yeah, I do. Okay. All right. So, just for the record, the forum is sitting here at the table. Mark, Kevin, Courtney, and me. Okay, give me one second, ma'am. Yeah. I know you've been considering some of the conditions you one foot on me. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, so, you know, to get through my. Okay. Too many piles of things here. Not what I need at the moment. At the top. Excuse me. Um, I'm just going to use this one. Um, just use these for the 
I am, I apologize for doing this, but I'm going to um, declare a two minute break. And I will be back in two minutes. I don't want to be there. Just leave me to do this. All right, um, since we're all back, reopen the meeting or resume the meeting. Um, so this is, as everybody knows, a uh, 40B project that's being proposed and therefore it's subject to the uh, relevant legislation which um, basically that they're applying for a comprehensive permit. The zoning board is the, light, um, the approval authority for this with input from other relevant boards. Um, so the ground rules basically are that when you uh, have a local comprehensive permit application, the Relevant local regulations do not necessarily apply, the state regulations do. Um, there's been, it's been said a number of times that, um, let's see if I have the language here, that um, we're supposed to, everybody participating in this, supposed to make decisions according to uh, uh, consistent with local needs and things like promote for purposes of things like promoting better building design, etc. And um, the um, my uh, I would say that we are it's not in our purview on this board really to um, 
promote better design, especially building design, and even things like density per se are not addressed by our regulations. Um, the state also, regulations, you mean? N not the con con well. Yeah, it's state, not right. Local, right. Um, we derailed my train. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. Oh, but also the, this this statement about the local um, taking into consideration local needs. It's a it's a long statement actually in the law, and it goes on to talk about. Um, local needs, you know, the need for affordable housing has to be balanced against the, all these other needs that we're holding hearings about. And in the case of a town that does, has not met its 10% target for affordable housing, um, there's a presumption that that's um, the most pressing local need. It's, it gets more deference. So I'm just putting out a framework. I don't know if anybody on, on the board has anything other to add or to contradict. Or Jen, do you um, have anything you want to add to that? Um, no. Once the board um, considers your order and conditions, we'll talk about submitting a referral to the zoning board of appeals okay. to attach to your order mm -hmm. and conditions. Um, I would say, Madam Chairman, that this board should make the finding in your findings that um, I think my original statement was that nine of these uh, homes would not be able to be constructed per your local regulations. Yes. I think that's an important finding yes. um, to be in the record. Absolutely. Okay. Um, where would you like to start? Well, um, there's a lot to be said, but I think in the end, from our standpoint, the two most probably important and worrisome factors have been um, the stormwater management system and the question of coastal banks. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, uh, from my standpoint, others may disagree. Um, you know, we've had lots of input on each of those matters from experts. Um, I believe that in both cases, the weight of the advice from the experts is that um, the concerns we have shouldn't keep the project from going forward. The coastal banks, um, we may make, we certainly will want to, I think, make some findings and perhaps um, suggest, if not require uh, uh, some adjustments um, where there's room for them to bring in um, the limit of work and the building itself um, where they are very, very close to the coastal bank, but um, I think you know, what I heard um, Jim O'Connell saying last week was that um, there is not, the project does not pose, pose a significant threat to any of the four coastal banks that... Um, uh, I have a comment about the limit of work. I'm, I got the impression he was going to use a ditch witch or something and cut in about six inches or eight inches or however deep, and I think that's a serious mistake because we're concerned about, I mean, the stability of trees and whatever. You start cutting all the surface roots, it will affect the stability. I think the first thing you said is move the limit of work in as far as possible. I mean, it's like two or three feet from the boundary line, and that's, mm -hmm. you know, the, the actual structure of the limit of work goes even closer than that. I think that's a problem. And mm -hmm. I think we should push that in, make it push it in. I, mean, I don't have any idea what number, but five, six, something like that. It's got to get away from <coughs> the tree roots and the shrub roots that are not necessarily on the property, but right next to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, following up on that, I, it was a little bit concerning to me and I think to some of the other people on the board that when they, their presentation was that 
Oh yeah, they were going to kind of br un brush cut the undercurrent before they put the limit of work in. Well, to me, limit of work defines work. Cutting brush is work. Yes. So um, my suggestion, and I think perhaps we should put it in, in some form, <coughs> is that prior to <coughs> they're doing anything out there, that in conjunction with staff, they, they <coughs> delimit the lim limit of work precisely and lay it out and if it means moving it slightly to protect certain trees or things of that sort that that should be done as a as as the first order of business and then it's clear and we should write it in there that limited work means limited work and so there's no activity of any sort on the other side of that and and i think that in the areas where um we're very close to the top of that coastal bank or it's so steep, the, the more space we can give from the top of that back toward where they're actually constructing, the better. I, I agree with you, and I think certainly we can, um, I mean, what, what we we, can condition those things. Yeah, what I'm concerned about is that the stability of that bank, uh, it can be threatened by all this construction. I said, this is intense. And, and the top of that, as every, a lot of the neighbors and everybody has testified, you clear cut that entire area, which was already forested and has a stable, and, and that's, that's going to be destabilizing. And, and that's why I think anything we can do in the conditioning of this to ensure that the integrity of the bank is, is protected. I, I agree with you. I'm not sure how we write that into into conditions, but well, I think that uh, we could require them to um, require that staff be uh, on site when the limit of work is placed. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, I also think um, in uh, in regard to. Let's see, I guess it was what uh, Jim O'Connell was calling bank number two, the steep bank, the, uh, the northeast. He was talking about... That's the one closest to lot 11. Yeah. yeah. He was talking about the advisability of just monitoring the face of that bank. Um, and that I'm not sure about how to go about thinking about something that would be enforceable um, and would actually get done. But another um, thing that we could condition and require um, to that end and also in the interest of just the safety of the people who live there is um, in addition to the split rail fence we've talked about um, across that back area, I think that we should require um, some dense planting then when all of the uh, construction work is done. There won't be a lot of room, but... Um, so planting along the limit of work? Yes. Staggered row? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, staff would be absolutely agreeable to me to determine where the limit of work is in the field where they have it marked and see if we can shift it in any way to save some fairly large trees the applicant did say that they they would be like willing not to clear cut the area to your point mark trenching that silt fencing in is a requirement of their turtle protection plan they have to keep the turtles out of that area um, that's why they trenched that silt fencing in. Um, I can talk. Is that specifically to, required by no. word, or is that just something that makes sense? I can look at their turtle protection plan again. If they can wrap that maybe silt fencing and place the hay bales on it and kind of do it that way, usually the proper way to contain any runoff on a site is to trench those those silt fences in. Well. If there's any way not to, boy, it's I a much that, better way so, to deal with the trees. So I, I get that. I understand that you're concerned about damage to the trees, but we're also concerned about runoff off that site. So we're going to have to balance that. Well, runoff is more 
I thought dealt with by grading rather than yeah. presumably they'll yeah. be grading soon. So right, I mean there was a lot a of there. talk about. Okay, I can talk to the about in areas to not maybe trench that. Let's see, I can pull up that turtle protection plan. Right? Yeah, that would, Why would help. Looking? I mean, there was a lot of talk about um, you know the various aspects, especially the grading in the stormwater management plan. Yeah, I'll have a, um, some comments. Preventing on runoff. Is, okay. is it their plan to put the whole road in first? They talked about staged construction, but <laughs> the runoff is maintenance system is down at the end of the road, which is probably the last part to be built on. So. Well, um, I mean, some of it's in the center of the road, isn't it? Temporary in the center of the project. Um, I have turtle protection plan. Okay, good. Temporary turtle barriers. The Proposed temporary turtle barriers comprised of entrenched silt fencing. What are you reading? Must be installed along the entire limited work encircling the construction footprint. What are you reading? The turtle protection plan that oh, was submitted okay. to Natural Heritage. It's going to be a requirement of Natural Heritage. Maybe we can use a shallow trench. I mean, the idea of digging that in six or eight inches is just horrible. The tree roots are right. Oh, I get, right no, I, I get it. No, I get That's it. I get it, Mark. I understand. I completely understand your concern, and it's, it's, it is valid concern. Um, we didn't done by a ditch witch in there. The other question was the order of work here, what, when they're going to put in the whole road, and yeah. therefore the storm water protection system, which is down at the, I think, far away from the starting end. My, my impression was they're going to put the road in. They were going to put the road in first. It's just that the construction of the housing was going to be phased. Yeah, I think well, they talked about clearing and all that. It just wasn't clear to me. That I just right. And, and I mean, they the said FDA. they weren't going to clear right all of the building sites. But Four at a time or something like that. But what about the right of way? Yeah, and putting the road in first <clears> is really <throat> the only thing I think that makes sense in terms of all the trucks and whatnot that are. Well, they put the Going first in. layer in or something, and then that collects the water, and then they can put the drainage situation in and get that under control. Right. Um, and okay, the in intention of the for construction is as follows: the area of the roadway, stormwater infiltration basins, and construction period sediment control is cleared, and an interim limit of work and erosion controls are installed. Okay. The roadway, roadway utilities, and stormwater control measures are constructed. So the road is going in. Good. Construction is to begin on individual houses, and then he goes on to his phasing of the houses. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Courtney? Um, all through the hearings have been sort of a dog with a bone <clears throat> and the dog with a bone has been the issue of <clears throat> roof runoff and maintenance of dry wells um, normally these are things that are <clears throat> left to the homeowner um, we've got however many units going in here tight together and as I pointed out in one hearing, it, it's, it's almost akin to a, a condominium where the areas of common responsibility are more. To have to, it becomes almost unenforceable to, for this commission or the town or anybody, <coughs> to ensure that the, down the road, the dry wells function properly. Well, no, no. Uh, I mean, you're putting a, if you put it on the homeowner, individual homeowner, that's asking a lot. We can condition. Uh, we've done this sort of thing before. We can um, include a condition where the, you know, the, the entire maintenance plan goes in the record, their stormwater management plan, and they um, 
are required to, to report annually to the Conservation Commission. So you're asking the individual homeowners to no, do the, I would say we should ask the Homeowners Association because well, this is this no is yeah This is where I'm go going with this. <clears throat> Making sure the gutters are clean and the drywall is function as they're intended and were designed uh, should be a responsibility of the homeowners association as opposed to the individual homeowners yeah. that's what i'm saying and and it may be that once we put that condition in there and i think we should leave some latitude the um the developer may wish to revise how he locate where he locates his dry wells originally the dry wells were in the first iteration of their plan the dry wells were in the driveway in the front of the house and i made the comment how can you maintain them if you've got asphalt over them so then they split they went can't went back and they got split so they may want to make that revision i think we should allow for that and for them to come in and submit an amendment whatever but I think the principle should be that stormwater management in all its phases, including roof runoff and, and, and dry wells and all of that, <coughs> should be the responsibility of the homeowners association. Um, it's too easy for an individual homeowner, particularly if it's affordable, and even if it's not affordable, uh, to say, well, you know, life is tough and I don't have the time. I don't have the money to go and afford a bobcat to come in and dig up the dry well and fix it. I think mm -hmm. well, I certainly agree with that. I think we just write it in. Yes, and it, it'll, so, and for, well, it'll be on every. You know, it'll be. No, I mean, so it, it just it just I would want a condition that it that it all of that is the responsibility of the homeowners association right. as opposed well, okay, wait, to the wait. individual homeowners. Courtney, Courtney, that that's great. Hmm? That's great. But they're phasing this project in. So you're going to have stormwater issues on this site well before a homeowners association. But, is but the builders before, the, the homeowners before all the uh, properties are. Well, then it's sold. all the problem of the developer. Um, yeah. The developer will be responsible. is the major shareholder. So yeah. it's right, right. The but, you know, so we're, they I'm are a, responsible yeah. until all of the ultimate residents yep. can take yep. over. Okay, that's what I just want this board to understand. No, no, I, I agree. I mean, the, the developer is responsible to, and once that's happened, then the homeowners yeah, that's, association that's takes over. Yeah, that's spelled out in the covenants that they provide. Well, yeah, but right now, standards. it's that uh, it's the individual homeowner's responsibility to worry about his roof runoff and his dry wells. Right, I know, but the basic issue of the phasing, um, I think, is not really an issue for what we're talking about because it's spelled out in the covenants that until all of the lots are sold or more you know yeah they're sold yeah if, um, that the developer is you know kind of the major shareholder and yeah he's the homeowner he's responsible, responsible for the storm water management yes. system until an association is created I mean it's clear that to me the stormwater plan as proposed will work as designed but um, five years down the road if it isn't maintained it won't work as designed and the most efficient way to ensure that it gets maintained and somebody can have the finger pointed at one entity I think you have to put it all on the homeowners association once the the thing is built out. Up to that time, it's a developer. Mm -hmm. I have a question. So however that's conditioned, that's what I'd like to see. Mark. Jen, do we have any way of uh, tagging trees to be left? Yes. Within the area of the development? Well, why wouldn't you? Well, I could imagine you know, house, house, house. I can imagine in the backyard of two houses there might be a tree which is not, which is farther away than three feet from the property line where they were just going to walk them all out. And it might be nice to leave it there. You can condition that the staff can go out and. That's quiet. where I was sure. getting to. That. Absolutely. And at the last hearing, they said that they were they would, they want going to, to try to preserve what they could. They're not going to be doing. 
I mean, clear I cut just imagine whoosh, cut it all out and build. Right. right? Easy um, for them, but that. So I think that's another thing that. Um, well, and we would want to do it during the phasing. So basically, what I'm what I'm thinking is, um, you know, they establish a limit of work for the construction of the road. Okay. So we get the road put in, and they that's they're not we're not going to have them establish that back limit of work right away. Mm -hmm. We'd like to see it stay right, out, of course, as long but as we don't want it, and they may have to entrench it for the turtle protection plan, but I will talk, you know, if there's any way we can phase that, the entrenched silt fencing and hay bales in the roadway first, mm -hmm. and then they can start the phasing of the houses, and then we'll do the entrenched area. And then lay out the houses, and then you can go out, or Mark can go out and inspect it and say, well, Maybe dealing with a builder, say this tree is nowhere near any construction equipment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say um, staff can, in conjunction with the builders, right, of um, just you know designate the trees that um, they really okay. want to keep. I'm really. I would be really um, designated by trees. Designated by staff. <laughs> um, that's going to be important on the those back um, yes. at least bank two and four. I think he has them labeled as banks two and four. It's going to be really important to keep some of those trees in mm -hmm. back in those areas. Yes, uh, Courtney. Yeah, I, I I think as to the extent possible, and trees within this area now should be maintained. The neighbors through letters and testimony oh, no. right commented now. about the fact that you know once you cut all those trees out the, the the mutual support system they have will lead to greater trees being mm -hmm. blown down in bad storms yeah. and things like that now I'm not sure that's anything unfortunately I'm not sure that's anything that we can condition because well we, Jim O'Connell had a suggestion about that I don't know that we want to get into a blanket condition on this exactly but he did suggest that some judicious pruning of remaining trees would help to keep them from you know just uh, right. blowing over and causing yeah you, you got to open them up damage. so that the wind blows through and doesn't get caught right and yeah, so I suppose we could condition something like that. Yeah, again, I think that it, it would be best for you know staff to do that in consultation with mm -hmm. the builder on site and, and also, um, you know, that should be something that's checked as the progress I mean, I, goes I, on. I, I appreciate the neighbor's concern that a tree now with its support system weakened on the side of the boundary of this development blows over and <coughs> trashes the guy's house um, you know and that but the issue is is that within our area of responsibility and my aunt, my guess is it, it, it isn't right I mean, some of the some of the area on this is outside of our jurisdiction anyway. So, you know, uh, I I think that the neighbors need to look to other get ways of guarantees of protection on this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, this is not new, but I'm um, just looking. I I watched the uh, FCT. They have. Jim O'Connell again this morning, and um, where he was talking about, I'm sorry, very tired, um, the additional vegetated buffer to go with the um, fencing, he was talking about that in the northwest corner where the limit of work is only five feet, what he refers to as Coastal Bank <coughs> 4, and um, uh, 
Postal Bank 2. He also um, recommends pulling in the limit of work. Postal Bank. Which Postal Bank? Uh, the one that's referred to as number two. two yeah, mm -hmm. two and four are the biggest. Yeah, that's two. where a lot of leaven is. Yep, pull in that Coastal Bank. Right, and that's also. I mean, limit of work. That is also um, where he was talking um, about the, the, you know, the advisability of doing some pruning. Yep. Okay. Call the limited work in. And Mark, just to ease your concerns, I was looking at this turtle protection plan. Um, it says we're digging the trench is not feasible to fit, so they can do, they can install the limit of work in another manner. When it's, quote, not feasible? I mean, we could define it as being not feasible for yeah, this sorry, particular Madam project. Chairman, I just wanted I mean, to clear this up real Not quick. being facetious. The installation of turtle temporary barriers must be conducted so as to minimize vegetation disturbance. It is not appropriate to clear large access paths prior to sweeps for turtles. No clearing may occur outside a limited floor, blah, blah, blah. The bottom of the silt fencing must be carefully buried in a four to six inch deep trench. The trench must be backfilled and compacted. If it is not possible to dig a trench, then the bottom of the barrier must be affixed to the surface. The silt fencing must comprise of at least, yeah. If it's not possible to dig a trench, the board can determine whether it's possible or not. Yeah. Okay. I won't let the board. What's the alternative to use me. stakes? Or? No, you probably just, wrap it wrap around it a two by four and then okay. spike the two by four to the ground or something oh, yeah, like that. Gonna, yeah, they'll do that and then they'll place a hay bale right on top of it. Mm -hmm. So it won't, you know. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. So pull the number two, pull that limit of work landward. Yes. Also, um, he had a suggestion to move building 10 in landward. Okay. Pull building 10, okay. Did he say anything? Uh, I can't remember lot 11. Lot 11 wasn't to be pulled in at all or um, figured? He didn't. Yes, think. he said some uh, landward and a bit to the east. He thought that there was room to do that. Yeah, I think he, so right now it's, they're all kind of lined up, so lot 11. It's kind of like this, in line with all the other houses. Mm -hmm, right. He's saying you pull it in and shift it this way. Yeah, I, I don't know that he was saying to turn. Well, he's saying shift it east. Shift it east, not, not necessarily exactly. change yeah. his orientation to the yeah. road, but. Um, it could, although it, yeah, okay. Look at lot 11. And then there was also a suggestion made, I think it was by Mr. Stowe's. I don't know that this, uh, if we can go this far, but to, uh, the suggestion was to require a bond on the homeowners association um, as a kind of fund to compensate a butter should there be any significant damage and that I don't know that we can do I, mean, I would leave that as a condition of the zoning board of appeals yeah okay is that something we could um, include in a, a referral yes a yeah referral to them That might be a partial solution to the uh, drainage issue, main, maintenance. Mm -hmm. That is, if, there, if the <coughs> uh, associ owner's association ha had to post a bond. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that kind of thing would, um, 
give them an incentive to, to uh, perform the maintenance. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, for things that would not reasonably be their fault, fault as homeowners, right. you know, like tr things happening with trees, um, there would still be um, an ability to at least compensate the abutters if anything yeah. like that should happen. If, like what should happen? Um, if um, there were tree damage or damage from trees that were... Homeowners insurance. That's that's what it's for. Yeah. Well. I think calling for a bond for that is outrageous. Okay. <laughs> it's beyond what would be appropriate, I think. So anyway, the the um, the area with the split rail fencing, where more vegetation was recommended, that's behind lots eleven and ten. Yes. And then, um, so if you want to go, if everybody pulls this, pulls the free engineering's February 12th memo out, it really details the, the phasing of the project. Uh -huh. um, and basically the lots along the northern edge where the coastal banks isn't going to be done until the lots along. Um, Alma Road, I mean, that, but the houses along Alma Road are done. Although they say that could change due to market conditions. Um, I'm sorry, Jim, what was the date of the there? February 12th. Oh, okay. That's the wrong one. So that makes conditioning the project and the shifting of the limit of work and doing interim limits of work. They have to put the whole thing around for the turtles as a requirement in natural heritage. But within that, mm -hmm. there'll be no clear cutting of the lot. They're gonna put the road in, we'll have them establish a limit of work along the road. They, they do that, they stabilize that park. Then they can start the construction along the south side and do like the first couple of rows, establish a limit of work around that. So every time there's a phase, we're going to want to see the establishment of a new limit of war. Right. So and there's no clearing that. before that. And there's no clearing before that. I would agree. <clears throat> That's good. Yeah. And the staff, when they get to the northern, the northern properties, northern properties, we'll go out and start flagging the large trees along near the coastal bank and pulling that, you know, pulling that limit of work landward. Well, project-wise. Yeah, landlord from the coastal bank. Right. Okay. You definitely don't want them clear cutting all those trees along that bank because that will further destabilize it. Yeah, absolutely not. Okay. And in fact, even, um, you know, I can see it well. Even the and you um, can also clearing of the in. low growth, I think, should be kept to an absolute minimum. And, and these are all conditions or recommend, like, you know, also um, points that you can make in the referral to the zoning board of appeals. Yes. Um, that you know, mm -hmm. this is what we're conditioning. This is what we're requiring. You know, the board of appeals should look at this issue too. Okay. The, you know, saving some of those larger trees along that limit of work. Okay. Um, in this circumstance, do the usual um, timelines apply for issuing the order of conditions? Yes. 
they do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a little iffy. Mm -hmm. Can you issue a certificate of compliance in sequence? I mean, we're probably talking more than three years of work here, unless they're lucky. Yeah, I know. I think you don't. Yeah. And so, what's your point? I'm oh, sorry. Can, can we you just let the let the the order of conditions last for six years, or how do we do they have to come in for? A, oh, I, yeah, good point. They can um, come in for an extension. Just an ordinary extension. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just do a regular extension. I thought you were asking me to phase in the um, certificates of compliance, and that's well, not. What happens if an owner wants to sell before the COC is done? Well, these things go. With the an owner, a home, an individual owner. One of the early owners buys it for two years and says, "No, this isn't for me. I want to move." And there's no. COC He's got this yet. sitting on the deed, which is an open order of conditions, and there's no way to close it. I don't have an answer to that right now, Mark. Okay, well, yes. I would think they would ask that. I, I, I can't yes. say that yes. it, it has happened in older subdivisions when order of conditions was placed on one subdivision. Um, we've seen that on older, older subdivisions back in the 80s and early 90s, and people have come in and asked to sell a property that's tied to an order of conditions that has multiple properties tied to it, and we have issued partial certificates of mm -hmm. compliance. In that instance, those were under very specific, you know, um, circumstances. I would have to evaluate it when it came into the office to see, to see. There's ways around it. Okay. I mean, there's ways of partially issuing a cer certificate of compliance for, let's say, Lot 22. Um, but we'd have to evaluate it when it came in yeah. and see where the construction was and everything else. I mean, if they buy the lot to start construction, they want to sell it and construction's not finished, I'm not issuing a certificate of compliance. Hmm. So, right. you know, I can't. So, okay. Hmm. Yes, um, hmm. Anything else the board would like to talk about? Or, no, yeah. just. Um, when you're writing the language on that um, roof runoff thing, make sure that you include all segments of the system, gutters, downspouts, and dry wells. Okay. to accept the order as discussed. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <clears throat> well, we can have the motion. Well, yes, you can have um, the, 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 with one caveat, and I uh, won't put no it in the order. No armoring of the banks at any time. Okay. I have, yes. This may be in the discussion part of it, and that is you're going to draft this up, but I think another set of eyes needs to look at it before. I would, I, that's why I, I was going to ask you about the timeline. I certainly would like to. Oh, absolutely. It. It's due on, this will be required to be issued by the 27th, and I'll send it to you, Madam Chair. Thank you. No. <clears throat> and I send it to anybody else who would like to. Oh, yeah, to I'll send it to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I will send it to everybody. Yeah, that's good. And then we can chime in on it. Um, so on that basis, I'll move to accept the order as discussed. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So aye. Now, was there more discussion you wanted to have about the matter no, of the no. referral? No, no. So, um, or just you know, I think in this, in this case, we'll be sending um, a referral to the ZBA outlining our, the conditions of our um, decision. 
and also our findings and our findings such as like you know most many of these houses yeah. would not be built built um the the importance of the tree the trees on the lot and the protection of the trees mm -hmm. and just really emphasizing that back limit of work and the protection of those trees in that area okay great all right Thank you. Now. Geez, they didn't flee. We thought maybe that you guys had all gone. We watched the rest of our orders. Like, I should have Next week's slide. Next okay. we have 59 Davis Neck Road, the White Sands Association. I got it. I got it. I think it's just going to be everybody here. Hang on. So there's an arm of staining on the road. Okay. On Davis Neck? Davis Neck, yeah. Who's abstaining? Jamie. Oh, yeah. yeah then I, did, I thought you said another person. Mark, Peter, Mary, Betsy, Courtney, Kevin. Hang on, let me get my bearings again. All right, guys, sorry. Um, clean this mess up in a second. Yeah, sure. All right. Basically, this is just the um, beach nourishment. White Sands has done it before. They're just asking to use the same, um, I believe, the same methodology, mm -hmm. although I've never seen the methodology on a plan like that. So it, it's kind of nice to see that on the plan. Um, and it's 150 cubic yards per season. Um, all the normal things. All the normal things you should um, condition it for annual beach profiles. So we know how much sand they're losing. Mm -hmm. Or gaining. Or gaining. Total maximum of 450. Move that we accept this disgust. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, unanimous, so moved. Okay. Vineyard Street. Vineyard Street, Acapusca Improvement Association. Yeah, it's the same quorum, same, same group. And Jamie's on this one. This is a. They were ordering out, they're refiling their beach maintenance, there was concerns of the neighbors, the cobbles go along the right toe of the dune. That's the only one that I remember. Make sure the cobbles were told. Maintenance once a year. And here we had the question of where the cobbles get dragged to. At the base, well, <laughs> Betsy said at, um, to put them along the base of the dune to help the dune right, not on establish. The yeah. Lot line to the abutting beach. Yeah. A move that we accept is discussed. Oh, and maintenance Second. once a year. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> oh, you already said that. All right. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Um, next, 438. Seacoast Shores Boulevard. Uh, okay, come on. Oh, that was just the little deck. Same one? Yep, the little deck again. The little deck expansion. There was really nothing to this. Yeah, little deck expansion. I move that we we accept this discussed. Second. All those in favor say aye. Okay, aye. aye. Opposed? Unanimous, so moved. 66 Kroll Road Tower. Okay, hang on one oh, second. Okay. You guys are going way too We're fast going. for me to write. <laughs> Move to accept as a discussed. 
That was that was an aside, not a Wise statement. Guy. I know. Uh, <laughs> which one are we on? Crawl? Crawl Road. <coughs> oh, I don't know what this is. Uh, okay, Crawl Road has a tree issue. They have a coastal bank issue, too. They have a coastal bank issue, but uh, I apparently don't want to deal with that. So what did... <laughs> What was Mr. Um, Santos's final decision? Oh, there's my writing. <coughs> tree compensation, six seated trees to be determined by staff. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, that was the, that was the, are you, did I miss something somewhere along the way? Is your staff increasing to 100 people? It's decreasing temporarily. Well, everybody kind of freely says, oh, and the staff can be on site when this is done and that's done. I know. We have nothing else to do. That's yeah, we true. just sit around and play, you know, like, right. play cards on it. But it's not a matter to be discussed in the middle of deliberation. No. Add tree compensation, six cedars. Yeah, we'll go out afterwards and help them. I think that was one of my comment on that one. Is the place you're supposed to stick to the Yeah, it'll be determined by the mark or not. We'll go out there. Uh, I would like to say within, you want it within the buffer of the coastal bank or within the buffer of the salt? Mm -hmm. I'd say the coastal bank. Coastal bank? Okay. Coastal bank needs a lot of help. Okay. All right. Just as an observation, uh, their limit of work is halfway down the hill now on parts of the places, parts of that lot. The lot is, they've lost a lot of uh, shorefront. I think Betsy mentioned that. I went out and looked at it. And that hill has really slumped quite a bit. Well, I think what they're doing is they're taking the house down. They're doing the stabilization project that you're not a big fan of, and then they're going to build the new house. Right. Stabilization project. It's so steep that that's going to come right up and actually push the, the top of the bank even closer to the house. It's going to be horrible. Well, I think maybe you should say the limit of work it, should be along the top of the coastal bank. They're crazy. Um, Actually, I mean, if the bank let me, slumps, let me, think, let me think about something. Right. You still want it on top. Right. So in the hearing, the sequence was demo, <coughs> sequence. The sequence was demo, coastal bank reconstruction, new house, correct? That's what Tim mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. Demo. Coastal Bank Reconstruction, new house. Makes How sense. about we have, after the demo, and after the Coastal Bank Reconstruction, they give me a new survey with the new location at the top of that Coastal Bank, and then where that house is, where the proposed house is, and the proposed house has to maintain the distance that they have on this plan from the top of that coastal bank. I like that. Except so they may have to move back. That that house may have to shift for where that new top of coastal right. bank yes. is. Right, but they don't have to come back to ask us. We're already giving them that shift. Well, no, they'd have to put the new shift in the new house and the new living work on a new plan. But well, right, right, right. But they don't have to come, come back, back before yeah. us. Right. right. Is that going to alleviate some of your concerns, Mr. Gurney? Yes, it will. Okay. That's excellent. Coastal Bank, okay, demo, see, well done. demo, Coastal Bank, new plan, new house, must maintain. Okay, got it. Is this someone coming to start work the next day? Um, <laughs> I don't know, unless it, um, it's not in there and this is Ahmed. Uh, okay. Okay, so okay, that should alle alleviate some of the concerns because that, that top of that bank may shift. 
Yeah, it's already. Yeah, it's already shifted. Shifted so since they're saying. Oh, shifted wow. since steep. When they and put the that stuff on, it's going to maintain. Move farther back. I wish they did. Yeah. I want to see. I want to see a new plan with a new top of the coastal bank and how this house fits in there. Y yes, oh. that's all part of it. Yeah. So the house I might have to move back. Probably well, the thing will. Is, is like, you know, the closest point is 14 feet, but I don't want them to say, oh, well, the closest point is 14 feet, and I'm going to hold that. So. There's sort of a glitch related to this project, which is the one on the, coast, the stabilization that uh, DEP apparently just issued a ruling that you can't use anything non-biodegradable in your stabilization system. As I say, you can't use any stainless steel screws, you can't use stainless steel wires. Wait, wait, wait. go back. Mark. I haven't got that? it yet, but I was talking to somebody in Mashby, the Mashby agent, and he said he had just gotten it related to their project, the project they had. Really? Drew has it? Okay. We're, that, that's we're not. That, that's that's I'll, horrible. I'll, 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 I'll call over to Drew. Stuff. No. I'll call over to Drew. That'll be Can we focus on well, trying to well, finish the, yes, this? Well, yes, I don't know for they, sure. Um, we the other coastal bank project's the already been. Hearing is closed before a ruling goes down. All right, new house must maintain the same distances. Distances. We wouldn't be able to use it in that one because our, our decision has already been made, but it's just yeah. interesting for me. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, um, no. Okay, good. All right. I move that we accept this discuss. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous, so moved. Okay, the rest is going to be really quick. Other business. Proposed revisions to land subject to coastal storm flowage regulations required as part of the community rating system. Um, so, um, yes, Madam Chairman, the, the, um, the Board of Selectmen um, voted last fall to be part of the community rating system. Bob Shea and I were appointed co-coordinators or co-CRS coordinators. We're currently working with Shannon Jarboe at the county, who is the county coordinator to help the town work through this process. While we were working with her, it was um, discovered that the um, we needed to change the dates of the FEMA maps within our regulations to begin the CRS process. Um, I spoke with uh, Pat Harris and Frank Duffy, and they suggested it did need to go through the whole public process. So I gave you the revisions. It was a date change. Um, we'll be putting it out for public comment for two weeks in the Falmouth Enterprise, and then we can vote those in and begin the community rating system. Um, just to let the board know, there are other ideas that the county and the staff have for more substantive changes to the land subject to coastal storm flowage regs, but that is not on the table at this time. It's merely a, a, a housekeeping issue. Great. Okay. Thank you. So if you could just, you know, approve the per revisions and we'll put it out for public comment. Right um, now? Uh, right now? Yes. I'll make yes. a motion to approve the revisions. Thank you. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Information on the signage at Black Beach. So we got a request from Mass Audubon yesterday? Yes, yesterday, to place this sign on our property and Salt Pond Area Bird Sanctuary's property at Black Beach. We haven't had a very successful plover um, seasons in Falmouth the last two years. A couple of the nests have been predated. They have been subject to overwash. There is a pair on Black Beach that has re-nested. Dogs off leash in that area are a huge, huge problem. Um, it's because it's so isolated, it's a very hard area to um, patrol for our MES and animal control officers. Audubon just wants some additional signage out there. Um, we made the decision, Mary and I, to, I mean, it was approving a sign, but we just want to let you guys know that these signs are going to be out there and they're related to the piping clover. Right, and, and um, it was also approved by Julian Susan. Do we need to take action? It, it's on pretty right. much been taken. No, it's done. 
We okay. just want you to know if we're having the signs up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I didn't know whether we needed to ratify that. No. No. Okay. Okay, so our last item, um, well, I'll read it and then uh, brief discussion and vote on whether commissioners who are not on the quorum can contribute to the discussion at least while the hearing is still open. I, um, this is, of course, arising out of what happened last week. Uh, it just wanted to have a formal discussion of our practice and, and group decision about it. Um, I think it's a good idea. However, um, Betsy has proposed that since we're missing um, Steve and Maury tonight, that we put it off until we have a whole group here. How do people feel about that? Probably put it next off. week or two weeks from now, something like that. It'll probably be a couple of weeks. Yeah. But we'll keep it on there. All right. More so we're tabling that. Yes. Um, Good idea. But we will take it up, Peter. Don't worry. We knew this. Well, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not promoting one way no, or the no, other. No, 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 no. But it raises a good point. Yeah, this is actually, I suggested this because my reaction is you know, I meant to discuss this a long time ago and it just. Mm. I lost track. I'm so, um, well, I, I think uh, one of the quorums we had tonight illustrates that uh, it would be helpful at some times, you know, when you get four people. Well, I don't know that. We wouldn't be able to do it. Before. Well, yeah, it's that not for a quorum, Kevin. What the discussion is, is during the public hearing. So during the hearing, if, let's say, you weren't at the hearing for. Right. <laughs> Therefore, not, not on the quorum. Circle, right. But you're, you're here for a continued hearing. You can talk, at, you can speak at the continued hearing, you can offer comments at the continued hearing, but you're still not part of the quorum. So you wouldn't be able to participate in the quorum discussion, but during a continued hearing, as you're sitting yeah. here counting the tiles on the ceiling, um, you may want to contribute, or you may want to count the tiles on the ceiling. I, I don't know. So. It's 44. It, yeah. you know, it'll give you guys the option to stare up at the lights or laugh yeah. at the chandelier yeah. and, or participate in a discussion. So nobody feels idea. like yeah. they're silenced in any way. I think we should continue this another yeah. Yeah. time. Move to adjourn. Move to, move to, move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Aye. Aye. Favor say aye. Second vote. Unanimous. Second vote.